Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, and we are presenting somewhat of a experiment, de definitely an exploration. We have been working with dry yeast, in particular, lager yeast or lager-like yeast, and uh, we were brought to, uh, this particular examination from the audience and also from ourselves. But uh, some of the dry lager yeast that we've been using lately and kind of liking um, are these three. Uh, Lalaman's Nova Lager Yeast, uh, also the uh, 30, 3470 strain, um, and also Lutra, Kvike's, uh, Kvike Lutra strain um, from Omega. And uh, what we did is we brewed, well, I brewed a, uh, a uh, that's Saf Sa Safe Lager 3470, just to make sure I had it right. <laughs> what I did was I brewed um, one big batch of vert. Uh, did like, I did probably four gallons, and it was all one malt. I think I used uh, RAR, two row, uh, just to get a nice, clean, uh, light um, base malt to go with this uh, t for this uh, this beer this lager that I was making three times for hops I went with U.S. Tetnanger because that's what I had on hand in you know a large amount actually I just used enough to get to about 35 IBUs for this uh, particular brew and that was about uh, one and a quarter ounce um, for a 60 minute boil. Once everything was boiled and uh, cooled to what uh, the fermentation that I was going for, which was 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, I split this whole batch into three uh, one-gallon fermenters and then deposited four grams each into each of the fermenters of the different yeast strains against uh, Nova Lager, 3470, and Lutra. And I will tell you that within 12 hours, all three of them were fermenting like crazy. Like I, I got everything into the fermenters 6 p.m. Uh, in the evening, woke up the next morning, everything was going very visible uh, fermentation. So what I haven't told Mike, I also use just spring water, so no additives, just uh, just spring water. Actually, cross that off. I did add in um, four grams of um, of gypsum just to give it a little bit more of a hoppy bite. Trying to get that lager thing going. And so, what I haven't told Mike was, of the three beers here in front of us, um, what yeast strain went into what. So we have beer number one, we have beer number two. And we have beer number three. And I said, do you want to, you want to like try to pick it out? And he's like, of those three, I'm confident I can do it. So I just have to remember which is which. But you tell me your notes on one, two, and three. And I'm pretty sure I've nailed it. I, I think you've totally nailed it. All right, um, continue. So this one, the aroma on this one, I actually get a touch of corn, a little bit of sulfur. But it's not overpowering. It's actually pretty well balanced. It's nice. This one, I get almost nothing out of the aroma. It's nothing i mean there's just nothing coming out of there um maybe i'm getting a little bit of beer smell but i'm just not getting much potency out of it this one i could smell it before we even this there's a lot of like a fruity type of thing coming yeah. off of here to the point where i wasn't sure if this was going to be a story about like um <laughs> ipl or something i thought <laughs> i thought maybe they were all like citra based but this one is fruity um fruity on the nose and fruity on the palate not really unpleasant, but it's um, not what I'm expecting. So, for me personally, I'm pr I think yeah. this is 3470, this is Nova Lager, and this is Lutra. Actually, Fuck. this is Nova Lager. Number one, the first okay. thing I pour is, is Nova Lager. Yep. yep. This is 3470. Good. And this is Lutra. <laughs> All that matters is <laughs> that is this is garbage. <laughs> and I don't mean that just because I can't stand the hype around Kvakes, but. This is not what I would want. I get like, it's yeah. fruity. There's actually a hint of like, yeah, it's um, fruity. of like uh, green pea shoots coming off of there. It's, um, it's a little bit vegetal. It's a little bit, yeah. 
Now, if I, but it, but it's, um, but on its own, I could understand how you would. It's it's still relatively clean. There's no sulfur. There's no funk to it. There's no weirdness. But it is fruitier. It's sweeter than these two. Mm. So I had these backwards, huh? Mm-hmm. It is funny to taste them side by side. I think that the 3470 plays really well. This is crisper. Yeah, with the that's lock. why I thought with that yeah. Nova Lager was like yeah, almost. Yeah, me too. But maybe that's the thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I and I made sure that I like yeah, put yeah. labels on everything, and this one was actually the last one I poured, the one in the, in the middle, and that's why I'm like, dang. Yeah. Yeah, they're relatively similar. Actually, I've done a lot with 3470. I actually like, I picked this one because I like the way it tastes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's 3470. I thought for sure this was a little bit more, but this is just traditional basement level fermentation, right? Yep. Not necessarily a, a well, lager ferment or this or that. No, I mean, it's just no, no. Cool basement temperature. A cooler temperature. basement temperature. Yep. Now, when I. Which is, I think, the fairest way to go about this. Yes, that's what I was trying to do. Specifically. And none of these got any kind of. Uh, uh, clarity treatment, yep, no yep. gelatin. I wanted to see, like, yep. also, you know, the differences between the two, like how much the yeast actually drops out, you yep. know. And now, of course, this is like an, this is an expedient process where the fermentation was done in a week, the uh, cold conditioning was done in a week, and then carbonation was done yeah, it's in fine. four days so that we could present it tonight. Um, I mean, judging color and clarity is a little unfair because of the way I picked the glasses out for you, but they're all pr pretty much very, the same, very yeah. much the same. Yeah. 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 Um, so just to, to put a fine point on the fermentation, I made sure because they were just one gallon jugs, I was able to get uh, buckets and control the temperature through water. So what was coming out of my tap? Uh, was exactly that temperature across the board. And I even just did temperature uh, checks, you know, throughout the day when it started to uh, get a little bit warmer. I, I would just switch out the water every two days just to keep the, the level of consistency as much as I could for the, uh, the, the actual temperature. Um, but other than that, they all were brewed, the, the entire vert was, was uh, brewed on the same day. The fermentation took place in the same days. The you know the cold crashing happened the same days, and then the the uh, transfer packaging also ha happened on the same morning. So, yeah. So that's interesting. I really I was <laughs> I was I was hoping that the Lutra was going to give us more lager like qualities. It's more yeah. It's just you know what I can actually s see why. Um, um, what this this would work really well in seltzer. Right, actually yeah. sort of adds a little bit of a dimension, a fermentation dimension that to me pairs well with cider, which uh, uh, seltzer, seltzer yeah. which is why back at two homebrew cons ago, they were passing out Lutra and a nutrient pack as a, here's your seltzer starter kit, kit. and it was yeah. Lutra, yeah. right? Yep. So um, I can almost taste it, like a, that would be good seltzer-wise. We made seltzer a couple of summer goes yeah. based on that, and that's yeah. what I'm remembering. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But it's... Again, if I wasn't drinking it side by side, I might be able to sit here and have a conversation about a Lutra lager and be sort of happy with it. But I think when you put it side by side with these other yeasts, you just, at least minimally, it's just not as tasteless, clean, benign as these. There's definitely a character there. Yeah. Um, my last two notes on the more the hybrid lager strains, um, certainly the 3470 projects the noble hop um, flavor and aroma uh, more than the, the Nova Lager. And I don't know, I, I've brewed the Nova Lager, that was at a cooler temp, that was more closer to 62 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but I really liked, as you can see, I really liked the 3470. I think that it, like, it matched what I was expecting from a, you know, U.S. version of a Noble Hop. You just have base malt, uh, spring water with some some additives to it and just see what happens and that's kind of like just you know fit that my my dream of it now the lager is good it's just um it's the the hops are a little muted in in both the aroma and, and the flavor hmm. i think that's why i maybe thought it was 3470 but yeah um cool yeah. right that's it 
a lot of hype, but, uh, you know, we drink it and we're just like, all right. You're like, this is garbage. <laughs> That's the biggest takeaway I got from this. Um, anyway, I think that uh, both of these, I, I was, I actually had bets more on the uh, 3470 than the, than, um, actually I had bets on Nova Lager being the winner of all this, but I think based on this experiment, I'm, I'm kind of um, pretty bullish on the 3470 uh, in this particular application. I'll, I'll still use Nova Lager for probably more um, malt forward and probably more hop forward uh, beers. This one's definitely good for what I think are traditional Pilsner-like lagers, for sure. All right, well, hopefully you got something out of this. I know that uh, this was something that was asked of us to present and, you know, three lagers, <laughs> three, well, three uh, yeast strain in one video. I mean, that's, uh, hopefully you, you got something out of it. Certainly we put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, so uh, if you like this, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and check us out on our blog, brew-dudes.com for John and Mike, yeast experimenters, brew on. Cheers.